Today on the Electric Playground, we're going to be taking a look at Skies, talking to Konami about their Metal Gear Solid. We'll have a sneak peek at Crash Bandicoot 3, and then we're going on a Mission Impossible. Dun, 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 John. Great, Victor. Thank you. Well, what is Metal Gear Solid all about? It's a pretty complicated game, but I'll try and give you a, a short explanation. Okay. Uh, you play a guy called Solid Snake. He's a genetically engineered super soldier. Your former comrades have taken a Alaskan military base by force and are threatening to launch a nuclear missile against the U.S. unless their demands are met. Your job is to get in there, defuse the situation, find out if they've got the capability to do this. So you're basically a spy, and you got some whooping to do. That's basically it. Tell me about some of the, uh, the technological advances that the guys at Konami have been able to do in this game. The textures you see in the game are so detailed, much more advanced than anything else in the market at the moment. Plus, you have two perspectives. You have a top-down perspective and a first-person perspective. And the transition between them is incredibly smooth. And that's what happens when you spend three years perfecting a game. That's right. Is that why we've been waiting so long? They basically had a finished game, but they just wanted to tweak it and make it beautiful? Yep. Um, our guys are perfectionists. They don't want to put a game in the market unless it's absolutely wonderful. So they spend three years doing that. What kinds of weapons and what kinds of special attacks and stuff can we find in this game? Um, if Snake doesn't have any weapons, he can punch and kick your opponent. Yep. If he sneaks up behind him, he can grab him by the neck, choke him, and break his neck. But when you get the guns, there are over 30 weapons in the game. From a single pistol, you can put a silencer on that, you can get a sniper rifle, or you can get some cool C4 explosive. Walk up behind the guard, and you have to be very good to do this, place it on his back. Watch the guard walk back to his friends, blow them all up. Are there RPG elements in this game as well? You have over 15 characters. Some of them help you, some of them attack you. Those that help you, you communicate using a radio that's embedded in your head. Um, these guys will tell you your objectives for a stage. They will tell you how to beat certain bosses in the game. Uh, and there's even one guy will tell you all about the flora and fauna in Alaska. When's the game out? The game's out in October. Now, who are these guys? Uh, these are our metal girls and boys. Uh, they're playing characters from the game. You have uh, Psycho Mantis here on the left. You have Vulcan Raven. He's a big guy with a huge gun, as you can see. We have Solid Snake there, and on the end we got Meryl. Meryl's a friend. She's going to help Snake during the game. The other two are the bad guys. I wouldn't want to make any of them angry. I can't wait for this game, man. Thank you very much. Thanks, Victor. We're here on the rooftops of Westwood Studios in Las Vegas, Nevada to talk about the next Command & Conquer game, Tiberian Sun. I'm going to drop in on the producer right now. Hey, Roddy! Roddy! How's it going? Hey, how's it going, man? Pretty cool, pretty cool. Hey, let me ask you a question. Sure. Where did the name Tiberian Sun come from? It's a three-part trilogy. We started with the first one being Tiberian Dawn, uh -huh. so Tiberian Sun, it's a little bit further, and then we've got one more, which will be Tiberian Twilight. This new whole real weird terrain thing that happens mm -hmm. in this version. Right, we've got fully uh, deformable 3D terrain now, which means you can do anything you want to it. Uh, for example, you have a cliff. You've got some guys that want to go up the cliff. You just start shooting at it. The rocks will start crumbling, and you'll get a little ramp, and you can drive up it. We'll have water uh, that'll freeze over in the ice missions, and you'll be able to cross it. But if you stay on it too long, the ice will break. So tell me about the whole fire thing. Like, the use of fire in this game is, like, really cool. It's pretty extensive. If you have a forest fire, for example, and you have an infantry unit that's nearby, he'll catch on fire and start taking damage, and he'll run around, start flailing about, <laughs> and set other units and trees on fire all also. Cool. Show me how that works. <laughs> this ought to be good.
Let's talk about some of the weapons. GDI is going to have more of your average military type of units, but with a futuristic flair to it. We have hover rocket launching tanks. Uh, we have mechanized infantry battle suits, which are kind of like a powered armor that the guy can run around in. The APCs are still going to be in there. Uh, a lot of new uh, ammunition types, rockets, lasers, uh, rail guns, all sorts of neat stuff like that. I saw the intro for this thing, which mm -hmm. just looks awesome. Yeah. You'll get a reward movie after each mission. This is the Westwood Rendering Farm. It consists of over 90 dual P2-300 systems. We are able to render out more artwork in one night than we were previously in three weeks. How many missions are there? Right now we're a little over 30. You'll be able to do nighttime missions, which will be really interesting. Huh. If you blow up the enemy's uh, light towers, it's going to go dark on the battlefield right away, and he might not be able to see your guys coming. What's it like working in Las Vegas? I mean, you seem to be a pretty low-key guy, you know? Dude, it's great! There's, like, nightclubs you could go to. They're always open. The bars, the clubs, the restaurants, it rules! You gotta go now! Right now! Now? Yes, go! Now? Right hey. now! Oh, whoa. Go! Whoa. Go! Later, man. Guys from Naughty Dog, the creators of Crash Bandicoot. And we're talking about Crash 3, yeah? Yeah, Crash 3. I saw some screens on this. Amazing. Thank you. I mean, how yeah, much better you. can you guys make this game? We try. At this point, not that much, I'm sure. It's, uh, we got a lot of surprises, a lot of, a lot of surprises that we haven't even shown here. But for now, we're really, really happy with what we've done. And uh, yeah, we think this is the big one. This is the best of them. We've been really focusing on like different gameplay elements and stuff, just giving the player tons of different stuff to do, like tons of different controls and like vehicles and like things to ride and like just have a lot of fun. Now I saw an underwater level, which right. which I thought was the best level so far of all, any level I've ever seen in Crash. Right, but we're holding our consistency. You know, Crash has got scuba gear because we all know he can't really swim. Right. But with the scuba gear, I guess it's okay, just like you and me. I, I saw Crash being traced by this big ass dinosaur thing, right. and there's some cool reflection going on there. What, what's what's that all about? Well, beyond improving the gameplay, because we're definitely getting better with gameplay as we go into the series. Right. We've also gotten much better at the PlayStation. Right. How much? of the PlayStation's power are we using? More than last year, right. you know? And uh, one of the things that we've gotten down now is not only standing on ice reflections like we did in Crash 2, but standing knee deep in water and having your body sort of cut off at the knees and having a reflection as it would in a pool of water. So that's our, our new trick. Impossible with the Z-Buffer, so it's not even a fake Z-Buffer now. It's beyond that. You can see a lot more of the game. I mean, there's a lot more depth and, and, and action going on, and, it, you know, you're, you're going down canyons and stuff. I mean, you guys trying to like expand the world of Crash here? We really tried to open it up and give you like broad far view so you can get a real like panoramic sense of the world. Crash 1 was a pretty big game. Crash 2, even bigger still. Is Crash 3 going to be an even bigger and longer game? Uh, absolutely. I, I think that uh, Crash 3 has more levels, there's more detail in them, and we're adding some new gameplay on top of getting crystals and getting gems as you did in the past. There's now an additional thing to get. So there's going to be endless gameplay for someone who wants to get the, the true 100%. What is the best part about making the Crash games? You know, pushing the limit, what, what's the best part about making the new Crash? Well, those of us that have been with Crash since the beginning, we've actually spent more time now on Crash Bandicoots than we spent in college. We spent more than four years total up by the end of this project. So we know this character well. It's like a best friend. And it's great working with a best friend. It's great doing another title where you know, I understand this world. I know what things look like in this world. What are the total number of units sold for Crash worldwide? Sony made a press release about a month or two ago that we had hit five million on one and two together. Uh, Crash One is the best-selling PlayStation title in America. We've really been able to hit numbers that are, you know, it's uh, 10 games in the industry have ever done it, and that's going right back to the beginning. Great talking to you guys. Cool. Thank you.